How's it going guys? I'm down here at this beautiful pond that I like to come to whenever I get cravings for some catfish fillets. When I want to do catfish catch and cook, this is the place I come to. It's called Miller's Fork. It's actually a special regulations area. So from March 1st to May 31st, it's for children under 12 and people that are handicapped. So now that it's June, I'm up here trying to get something to eat and see what I can catch. I usually come over here to this little dock area let me and my girlfriend use some worms and some bobbers to catch some bluegill and then I'll take those bluegill fillet them up throw them on a hook and let the catfish go at it so, see what we can make shake all right the only thing I use to catch bluegill is a little 64 ounce trout magnet jig head a little weighted clip on bobber four pound fluoro on an ultralight rod generally you find them in the shallow areas. All right, guys, we just got one bluegill. So, at least we got a little bit of bait. I did have some leftover crappie from yesterday and the day before, so it's a little stinky. I might try to use that too as a little, little cheater bait. But at least we got one. Now for catfishing, I got two rods. They're just little bass rods. One's got braid, one's got mono. I'm just gonna use a one ounce no roll sinker to a swivel. Should have a bead, but I just don't have any with me today. And this is a uh, size two bait holder eagle hooks now. Got kind of lazy, didn't feel like tying my own, so I just grabbed a pack of these. Red ones for a little bit of collar, just kind of help catch the eye or something. So, come over here to the bait cooler. There's that crappie I was telling you about, trust me. She stink, she nanny. Come over here. We go for it. Right down the side. That's really all you need, guys. That's it enough for them to fit in their mouth and set the hook on them that's it a lot of times these guys hook themselves i've almost lost a couple rods to the water to be honest farm pond i have once had to fish about there we go that's it so bottom and i just noticed these little holes right here so i'm <laughs> what are you doing right there that way they can kind of hook themselves now, if I have to, I'll go grab the circle hooks so they really can hook themselves, but usually I can get a good job with bait holders on channel cats. They got big mouths. For this rod, we'll try this stuff. Crap it. It's too big of a piece for a hook, so it's gonna cut. Then we'll throw this one somewhere over this way. Probably the one too. This rod was given to me by the maintenance man at my apartment. So, still got a little figuring out to do. It's my first cast on it. And, missing a tip. I have to put a new eye on it. Mm. Here we go. That's good. It's a little bit deeper over there, to be honest. We'll just wait for a takedown and keep bluegill fishing. We got one, guys. No, it's too bad. Nice channel cat. On the fresh bluegill. <laughs> it's 
Sweet. Nice channel cat. Put him on the stringer. There we go. Channel cat on the stringer. Sturdy. All right, guys. I'm just going to clean it up and use the same piece of bait. Try to cast it out the same spot I did. Yeah, I'm going to have to throw some braid on that one because it's the same reel. And I like braid on this. Well, I'd say it's time to move this one. Since that one got a bite and this one hasn't. I've been eyeing this branch over here. and I'm gonna try to throw on this branch. Yep, right there, pull them right out of there. This one's already gone. It just got slammed. Oh my gosh, this one just got slammed. This is like nasty crappie. I sure hope he comes back for it. See if he took the bait. That was a good hit. Unless something clamped in my line. <sighs> Bait's still in there. Clean it up, throw it back out. I wasn't so worried about hitting the record button just now. That one just got slammed again. I'm gonna wait for him to take it this time. Mmm. They're sitting on that tree. Yep, here we go. I had literally just turned the camera off. Catfish. Did they stop catfish? I don't think so, not yet. I know they stopped trout earlier in the year. Yeah. Yeah, we come out here and caught some fish and trout. But uh, there's a guy out here, two or three guys out here, three or four days ago. Uh huh. And they said that they, they somebody told them that they were going to stop, uh, stop this and then that's the lick, lick creek. Heck yeah, that'd be nice. I love that because this is where I come from. I eat our catfish. Right. I don't like getting anything to eat out of the Ohio River or anything like that. Uh -huh. That's what they're, uh, we'll put in, they'll put in if they do. Awesome. Glad to hear it because I already got one on the stringer and I've gotten a couple more bites, so they might have already done it to be honest. Get on your, get on your phone and I don't know, you know the hotline for trout stalking? No, I don't know the hotline, but I know the website to get on where it says when they stock stuff. Yeah, well, you can get a number on that hotline. You can call it on your phone. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you what if you call today. It'll tell you, you know, in the evening. It'll tell you what where they stock at. Okay, sweet. I'll have to look that up because I always check online, so I'll start calling them for that day updates. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this is one of the first uh, ponds I fished whenever I started catfishing, and 
I got several good eaters out of here, and I've been in love with it ever since. Trap stalking. Oh, you called it? <laughs> uh, uh, I'll give you the number. Can you see that number? Stocked with catfish on June fifth, Big Ditch Lake, Camp Caesar, Castleman Run Lake, Cheap yes, Horse Thank you. Lake, yeah, yeah. Every evening, just call. Mm -hmm. it, it'll tell you where they. It just Rock goes on until he gets Cinder down. Tomlinson Run Lake, Wallback Lake, and Watoga Lake. That completes the stocking report for today. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest stocking. Yeah, uh -huh. call them in the evening, you know, about this time in the evening, and you'll get all the stockings Your with it. Awesome. I didn't know that. I really appreciate that. Thank all you. Hi, right, brother. That's one of the great things that I love about fishing and the fishing community and stuff that you'll really just meet a lot of nice, good people and get a lot of good information most of the time. Just messing around waiting for another catfish. I got another bluegill, bigger one. I missed it. I was scratching my arm looking away. Not that time. Take blue deal. Well, it's 6.30 and we haven't gotten any more fish. Only a few more bites. So, while the two poles sit there, I'm going to sit here and clean up all this nasty trash. It's just disgusting looking. Try to make this place look a little bit better for the next person. Two full bags of trash in this one little spot. So much better now. After two full bags of trash, I think we're just gonna pack up and uh, go cook. Hey guys, got tired yesterday, so we're gonna do the catch and cook today. Just got done with work, so I'm gonna stop over here at Save A Lot and get the oil, uh, the batter, and a 20 ounce of Sprite, because that's what I like to soak my catfish fillets in gets any fishy flavor out and just makes it a little bit sweeter so see you all and save a lot mm -hmm. my favorite season Louisiana fish fry uh, well save a lot had the oil and they had the fish fry mix the seasoned Louisiana fish fry mix but it did not have any Sprite, so I gotta make one stop at the gas station. Then I will see you all back at the house. What's going on, Mr. Pumpkin? You wanna have you wanna have some catfish? Pumpkin lives for catch and cook days. I only give Miss Harden wet food, and then whenever we do catch and cooks, whether it's deer, turkey. Fish, whatever. He gets a little piece of it. My old pumpkin butt. Alright guys, so just really fast, I'm going to show y'all the simplest way i found to flay these guys. So, I'll come over here on the side, right behind that gill plate back there. Slice straight down. Go all the way around that top dorsal fin down to the background and just run that background all the way down. 
we're just gonna fillet that thing right down the ribs. Come out over here. Saucing all the way down. Let's work your way down that rib cage. Get past the rib cage. I usually just cut it off. Some people cut it down. I don't. And boom, there's one fillet. Now let's get the other side. Right there behind the gill plate. All the way down. Around that dorsal fin. To the backbone. And follow that backbone. Oops. I cut that too. Follow that backbone. All the way down. Boom. Just like that. Come over here on the inside. Boom. Just like that. And the catfish fillet. There's two fillets. Now, I'll show you guys how I skin these. I'll usually just come over here. Because I like to make nuggets out of these. So I'll come over here. Right here. Cut down the skin. Grab that, just let the knife do all the work. Right, right down that skin. The sharper knife you have, the easier this will be. All the way off there. Boom. Now that piece over here, that last one I get. Cut that out too. Boom. One, two, three, four nuggets right there. Let's guard that. Same thing for this side. Down on the skin. The knife does all the work. Do it back and forth. That one came off a little bit better. I got some more meat off this one. Don't rush it, guys. Everyone's still learning. Even I'm still learning. You're not going to get perfect every single time and get every last bit of meat off. But just try to slow down and do your best. Another nugget. Discard that. Now what I like to do with these is take them off cold water. I'm just gonna put hot water. And throw them in there. So rinse them off. Throw them in there. And this right here is all you need to get started. So it'll take some sprite, throw it in the mix. Just let this catfish fillet just soak up that Sprite. Sometimes I even like to use a Ziploc bag, but I didn't have any gallon size Ziploc bags left, so I'm just gonna leave those in there. Then put it in the fridge for a couple hours. It don't have to be that long. I'm probably gonna do about 30, 40 minutes just because I wanna hurry up and get this made. But I'll see you all back when it's time to fry. Now that the catfish fillet's been soaking for about an hour, Gonna take a small little Ziploc bag. You can use a bigger bag, but like I said, this is all I got right now. So I didn't want to put the Sprite in there. Sprinkle your fish fry in there. And then shake off your fillets and throw them in there. Or in this case, nuggets. You can do this with fillets too to make big pieces, but I like catfish nuggets. I like to have a lot of crisp on the edges. Each bite. And the last piece. There we go. So now we'll just close it up. And there you are. Coated are ready to fry. I feel like the Sprite also just helps it make it a lot stickier whenever it sticks onto the fish rod too. So there we go, some nice even coated catfish nuggets. Now let's get them in the grease. Okay, to fire up these catfish fillets, we've got about 
a half inch to maybe three quarters of an inch of oil in the bottom of the pan. I'm tearing it on medium heat. Don't want it on too high or it's just going to burn. Let it heat up to where it's just about ready to start popping when you put something in. Alright guys, the pan of oil is finally heated up. I got that back pan back there getting ready to boil some water so I can throw pumpkins, little tiny pieces of catfish in there. When I make him fish, I don't like to give it to him fried or with breading or anything to it. I just give a little tiny slither uh, boiled in water. That's it. Do with everything. Even deer meat. Boil it in water till it's cooked and then give it to him. Make some room here. I'll burn it myself. Oh, okay. Got my little tongs. This is pumpkin's little piece right here. <laughs> that little slither right there. Which <laughs> means everything. There we go. There we go. Just let it cook. I usually like to give about three or four minutes like this and then flip them over and give another three or four minutes. And then pumpkins back there, literally like probably two minutes if that, just let it boil, boil, boil till it's all perfectly white. Cooked and falling apart. It's actually really cool when catfish flays are cooked, it literally flakes and layers like that. It just breaks apart. away from the burner for that burns. Pumpkin's about ready too. Can't stick it in there, don't take much. Pumpkin's little pieces white and done. So let's just set that on the side for him. Let it cool down. As you can see, they're starting to look nice and golden brown, so I think it's time to take them out. It's been right around about four minutes each side. There you guys have it. Beautiful golden crispies. And then we also have pumpkin's little dish too. So let's see how he likes it. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Here you go, Well, never mind, I guess he wants to eat off the floor. Here. Here. Right off the floor. There's all of it. Go ahead. Here, babe. Here. He's so weird for that. I don't know why he made me put it on the floor. But he does sure seem to like it. Now it's my turn, so let's go outside and see how it tastes. Well guys, I'm out here with the uh, Golden Krispies and we'll see how they taste. Damn. Actually still a little bit hot. Mm. Like something you get from Cap and Bees, literally. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this, subscribe and like for more. And see you guys on the next one.